We are so thrilled to welcome the mayor of the city of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, David. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. You, you run on time. We do. We, we try to. That. I know it's not what I'm supposed to do. But <laughs> I, I had an acting coach who once told me that if you're five minutes late, you have to multiply that by everybody in the cast. So you're actually 45 minutes later. So it, I try to live by that. And, and it's rare among politicians because with, with your schedules, you're running and it running. Tough. Thank you it's so tough. much for being here. This is our first tech conference called Scale, where yeah. we're trying to convene uh, thought and business leaders around tech, uh, entertainment, digital media, transportation, all the things that, that interest you. Uh, you know, now it's very popular to be, uh, you know, in tune with tech and following tech. Why is technology so important to you? Well, I think technology is, in this town in particular, uh, kind of in a unique, space, uh, a unique space and a unique place. Los Angeles has always been this city of storytellers and story makers. And technology is the means by which we kind of tell stories and the way that we create narratives. And I think at this moment in human history, it's the, certainly the velocity of change has never been what it is today. In a year or two, you know, I, I was, uh, somebody was apologizing to me for taking a, a picture of me the other day, a selfie with their iPhone 6. They're like, this is so old. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, things change so quickly right now that it opens up opportunities that if you are going to be a competitive city, if you're going to take advantage of the quality of life um, increases and, you know, um, the growth in uh, transportation networks or green space or the way that you run your organization. If you aren't fully embedded, understanding, embracing technology, you're left behind. You will be a city that will suffer. You'll be a city that's less efficient. You'll be a city with higher unemployment. You'll be a city that's less accepting. All these things, I think, drive back to technology and understanding it. But so often I found, even when I was a council member, you had a lot of people who were technologists who didn't understand government. You had a lot of people in government who weren't technologists. And I'm, you know, a little bit of both, you know. I wanted to try to be one of these interpreters in between. So, for instance, it sounds so trite now to say, but we were the first big city to move um, email to the cloud. But when we did it and we proposed it and we put this out to bid, people, you, you might as well have been telling people to go to work on donkeys. Like, it was like, we cannot do this. We have to guard our own servers, which are programmed with Fortran and Cobalt and interns are there and there's battery acid dripping on them and like this is more secure than the Google, they can't protect our email. <laughs> and Google won it and I've always tried to embrace it quickly because I think that you can help shape the architecture of it. So whether it was the first weeks that I came in and rideshare was controversial and cities were building up walls around it, you know, legally. I, I don't want to be future phobic because I don't think you can stop technology, but I also don't want to be future passive, which is those are the two kind of roles I saw most cities and most uh, metropolitan leaders taking. I want to be future guiding, which is where you take the kind of great disruption of technology, but kind of temper the arrogance that it can have sometimes with it and say, hey, I don't know everything about your technology, but let me tell you about the human impact and the obligations you have to a society, not just a product or a service, so that we can make a partnership to make you stronger, our city better, and do it for the long haul. And you, know, you sort of referred to as the first uh, tech mayor of, of Los Angeles. Uh, you've got a room full of founders, executives, investors uh, in a lot of local LA companies. and. Uh, I just uh, was at your LA Tech Fair uh, a few weeks back, which was hugely successful. Yeah. I mean, whoever was there, Thank it was you fantastic. Everybody came out. Yeah. We're talking thousands, four thousand people there. Krista Wolf, uh, we did. No, we we hoped to have two or three thousand. We wound up having thirteen thousand people sign. Thirteen thousand. Thousand. It looked like a casino on yeah. the floor. I mean, that it was, was so many people looking. And the at house always companies. wins. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> there you go. It was good. So tell us, tell us about some of the specific initiatives that you've. Um, implemented since becoming mayor, and what are some of the things that, that you are looking to do sure. that will benefit the tech industry? Well, we, we tried to do kind of threefold. One was to change our own operations and to open up the city and city government as a platform for innovation. Two was to try to be a convener and to bring people together at City Hall. And then three was to really help individual companies grow and figure out what they needed in terms of access to capital, human capital, etc. So working backwards, you know, we, we noticed the amazing kind of assets that we had, but we weren't capitalizing on them. For instance, three top 25 universities, only city in the country to have that. You know, uh, of course, USC at the very top of that. Is Thank that you right? very much. Um, yeah. And then, uh, we, but I brought together all the chancellors and presidents of the local colleges and universities because 70% of our engineers were gra graduating more engineers than anywhere else, but we were losing 70% of them to other cities when they graduated. 
And um, we got together and we said, this is something Caltech, UCLA, USC, CSUN, we can all be working on together. And that's changed. In three years, about 70% of people are staying here. In fact, I was talking to a, a food tech startup downtown and they said two of their engineers went to USC, rejected Harvard and MIT because they said all the good companies are here in LA, we want to be here. Um, so, you know, that's kind of evidence of what can happen. One person really liked that. Um, <laughs> Uh, not the MIT admissions director over here. <laughs> um, so we tried to make sure that we had access to good people and then access to capital. We saw that uh, clearly there was amazing startups where one out of less, l less or fewer than, sorry, more than one out of every 200 residents are entrepreneurs in LA. It's the highest rate in the country of entrepreneurialism. Um, but we wanted to make sure that people had access to capital and so many companies were starting up. It was get acquired, the capital comes from someplace else. So we've been part of a conscious kind of um, strategy to bring more uh, startup capital here. Second area, which was to convene, we started a tech council very early on. I mean, everybody from you know, Evan Spiegel to Van Jones to look at how we could diversify our tech uh, uh, pipeline to mirror the city's demographics, how we could bring together disparate parts of tech so that we have people in clean tech talking to people in digital tech, talking to people in entertainment tech and VR and gaming and you know, each one of these aspects together. And our first convening of this at City Hall, we hoped to get a few hundred people. Again, we had like a few thousand people that came to City Hall and they're like, wow, what are we doing here? We never thought of City Hall as a place where technology meets. Um, and then the, the first thing is kind of twofold. One, we wanted to open up City Hall and be much more technologically forward leaning. So whether it was the first city in the country, in the world, I think, to share data with Waze, um, whether it's helping companies that want to experiment with their product on our city streets or uh, at the Port of LA or the Department of Water and Power or airport. These are amazing assets we have and we're saying, go ahead and use us as a platform. The flip side is we'll promise to share more of that data and use it in a much more informative way for kind of our civic mission. So Esri, for instance, you know, if you go to our, our um, GeoHub, so it's geohub.lacity.org. At this point, everybody takes out their devices and stops listening to me. But if you check out geohub.lacity.org, it shows the um, uh, kind of GIS way that we're using data to better serve you, whether it's clean streets, where now we've rated every single street, every block of every street, so you know how clean it is in a three-graded index, um, or whether it's the work that we're doing to open up our data. And we went from unranked to number one open data city in the country and three years running number one digital city in America now in terms of the government operations with technology. So it's still a long way to go, but we wanted to model good behavior, bring people together, and then provide the assets people need. You also bring great people in the city hall that probably weren't invited in the past. Um, it's the first time I've seen you bringing in practitioners and business people into your administration. Yep. And uh, you know they have an entrepreneur in residence or more than one entrepreneur in yeah, residence. Amir's, Amir's somewhere here, isn't he? Amir Tarani? Yeah, Amir. Amir. Amir Tarani. We've had, we've had three, uh, four uh, entrepreneurs in residence, entrepreneurs who actually become kind of fellows at City Hall and your advocates there to work on that. And that's been great. Thank you, Amir, for your service. And Jason Nazar and other folks, um, Z Holly, other people who've actually started a lot of businesses themselves who now are embedded at City Hall. Yeah, we've got, uh, got some people uh, in mind for the next ones. Uh, some great. great people that want Excellent. to get involved. Um, well, the, the name of the conference is Tech and Entertainment. So let's talk entertainment. I think they shoot like 50 times a year at City Hall as a, either a backdrop or an active movie shot, shoot. Um, what can you see from your office um, that's happening throughout LA um, that we're seeing more and more film and television uh, projects and programs being shot here? What are some of the initiatives that you've uh, instituted there that have helped that? Well, you know, it was sad for me. I was a council member before I was mayor and the area I represented was Hollywood. And I watched just year after year, decade after decade as we watched Hollywood leave Hollywood. And to me, um, I wanted to spend all the capital I had built up in my first, winning my first election to uh, spend that up in Sacramento to try to expand our fil film tax credit. Because it was a really a dollars and cents thing. Everybody I talked to said, LA doesn't need to be the cheapest, but we need to be competitive so that things aren't in North Carolina and Canada and New York all the time. And I convinced a very skeptical governor who, God bless him, signed finally an expansion of a tax credit. We like Jerry Brown because he's cheap and he's kind of like, make this case to me. And you know, I, I said, this is like your high speed, this is like my high speed rail. I've always supported high speed rail. I said, everybody thinks you're crazy. You know, you're right. You think I'm crazy, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right on this, sign it. And um, with really strong legislative leaders, uh, Kevin DeLeo and other people who helped us out, we expanded more than tripled the film tax credit. In just two years, we've brought more than $2.5 billion of filming back and over 50,000 jobs that wouldn't have been here. It's a five-year expansion. 
So that was the most important thing. There's so many people I talked to who couldn't spend you know, a night at home, their marriages were breaking up, they didn't see their kids, they were traveling to work. And now this was the best production year last year that we've had. So um, things are coming back here to <laughs> LA and we're not going to rest on those laurels. Um, three years out is when this expires. I'm hoping we'll go from 300 and something million a year, 330 million, up to 500 million a year for the next five years because this pays for itself. We get much more tax dollars back to the government, so anything that we would credit, um, we get back. But by the way, it's, a, it's the wrong measure. All the films and TV programs that don't get it wind up not coming, like 90% of them. So it really is, if they get it, they'll film here. If they don't, they're headed somewhere else. It's their first choice to be in LA. They'll pay a little bit more because the crews are better. They're close to home. They don't have the expenses of putting people up in hotels. But we've got to, this is you know, something we've got to continue battling. Second, I wanted to make sure city facilities were much more open and inviting. So from City Hall to you know, going up to the Griffith Observatory, which we saw so beautifully in La La Land, and, um, other, other TV shows and films, we've really made it easier to get your permits and to film, especially with city facilities. And I pointed the first kind of film czar, um, Ken Ziffrin now is the, is the, the second, um, and a point person who happens to be the president of the Board of Public Works too. So uh, Kevin James, who some of you may know, he's the, the president of the Board of Public Works, former entertainment lawyer, and also kind of the film uh, person inside City Hall. So you haven't have any problems, it's nice to have somebody who already has a position of authority at City Hall who can cut through that red tape and get your production going. You, you, you so effortlessly sell the unique assets of LA, obviously that's part of your job, and you mentioned storytellers, and uh, we've got so many great storytellers, that's one thing that just other places don't have. Um, and I saw Brian and Veronica Grazer here earlier, so one of our, our great storytellers in the city. Um, another storyteller that's very meaningful to USC is George Lucas, yes. and uh, deciding to, uh, uh, and winning the opportunity to locate the Lucas Museum yes. uh, across exposition from USC uh, is such a huge thing for the city and for our neighborhood. Um, can you tell us what the museum means to the city of Los Angeles and when can we expect it and what can we expect in that museum? Well, um, George and his wife Melody Hobson, who are just two amazing and generous and brilliant people who have both made their impact on this country and this world, you know, initially we were going to build in San Francisco, that fell through, they went to Chicago, that fell through. And even when they, the first San Francisco one fell through, I called him and said, hey, any chance to get this in LA? And he said, 95% chance we're going to Chicago. And I said, great, all I needed was 5%. <laughs> and that was the first time <laughs> so we started. So you're giving me a chance. Kind of, yeah. You know, competing for it, we lost that round, but it planted the seed that LA was a place that um, not only can capture the imagination, but can get the job done. I think that's what's changed. People have always imagined we're storytellers, but can we actually create and get business deals finished? And so in the end, when we were competing with San Francisco again, our ability to quickly get that development done helped us win because we've changed things at City Hall. So uh, projects used to take two and a half years to get their approvals can get their approvals in two or three months now. And uh, they're very anxious to get it built. It's going to be an incredible museum of narrative art. Um, everything from uh, film making and the art of that, and obviously lots of things from great films, to their extraordinary art collection, which has um, narrative painters, people like Norman Rockwell and um, Basquiat, and you know different folks who kind of have storytelling at the core of their art. It's going to be an incredibly beautiful museum on the northwest corner of Exposition Park. So think about this. As he said it, we kind of closed the deal. I said, you could be on an island, which is what San Francisco was proposing, or you could be in South LA with nine high schools within walking distance with people who are born in zip codes who sometimes don't get the opportunities to dream. And they'll be able to walk there. And he then said this, imagine going into the Lucas Museum, seeing how we imagine going into space with Star Wars, and then go to the other end of, the, the, of Exposition Park and see a space shuttle to see how humanity actually did it. And that kind of connection of the Natural History Museum there and the California African American Museum, and all these things provided this kind of synergy. It's almost like our own national mall, but right there and across from a great institution. And two, right now it's Expo Line, but we're gonna be building a, either BRT or rail line on, on Vermont, thanks to the voters in Measure M, the intersection of two public transit lines. It's a, it's a perfect location. We're so thrilled that you're, you're the one pitching. Thanks. I mean, that really are closing, because <laughs> you, just, you just make the case so strongly. Thank you. Um, LA has become even more of a sports town. We've had the Lakers, the Clippers, we've had 
uh, the only professional football team for a long time was the USC Trojans, and now we have <laughs> we now have the uh, Rams, the Chargers, uh, Brandon's ownership, you know, part of the LA Football Club where the sports arena used to be. It's it's a big time sports town again, and uh, we're in the running for the 2024 Olympics. Um, you've taken the lead role in uh, promoting LA's bid. Um, how did you come around to believing that this would be the right move for the city of Los Angeles, and what do you think our chances are? Well, I didn't have to conclude. It was, uh, you know, my first day in office, the first action I took was to write a letter to the U.S. Olympic Committee saying, we want to bid for the Olympics. Um, and that comes from growing up here. You know, I was, I was 13 years old the last time the Olympics were here. I remember, like, you know, being at summer camp and then driving to the Coliseum and with my parents and seeing, you know, Carl Lewis set a world record, the closing ceremonies, everybody who was alive remembers the rocket man coming down and all these kind of cool things. Coincidentally, my daughter Maya will be uh, 13 years old in 2024, and I just was, I was like a dad, a sports fan, and an Angelino saying, we've got to bring the Olympics back. We know how to do the Olympics well. We've got the infrastructure built. I want to give this gift to my city. And I didn't know what would change kind of politically and in the world between then and now, but we've seen eight cities that were involved, six of them drop out, so it's down to LA and Paris now. And, and I asked Casey Wasserman, um, a dear friend, to kind of take over as chairman of, of our bid. Boston was actually picked first. Boston wisely dropped out because it's so expensive for most cities to do an Olympics. It doesn't make any sense unless they have a lot of extra money lying around. But here, when you talk about that infrastructure, we're going to have the most expensive stadium ever built in human history in Inglewood for the Rams and Chargers Stadium. LA Football Club, you know, we've got StubHub, Staples, all these things that have been built since the 84 Olympics. And too often cities fall in the trap of, why don't I build some stuff for this two and a half week event and hope that the city can use it afterwards? Yeah. LA is really smart. We build things for ourselves, whether it's our transportation infrastructure, Measure M will be 15 rail lines we're expanding or building. Um, we're you know, investing in our airport, $14 billion, more than any city in America. Uh, and we're doing these things for ourselves and then saying, by the way, the Olympics will, will benefit from this. And that's the right way to think about these things so you don't have an empty Olympic village. We're not gonna build an Olympic village. We're gonna be at this other school, you may have never heard of it, it's called UCLA, um, <laughs> but this campus where you're, you have, you know, like at USC, experienced people serving great meals and beautiful dorms, you know, with sports facilities all around them. No Olympic village has ever had that. And LA has always been a games changer. In 32, funny how history repeats itself, everybody dropped out until actually we were the only one left in the depression and we built the first Olympic village. Now that's the heart of the experience. In 84, everybody dropped out until we were the only one left, and it was the Cold War, and we showed that private sponsorship could save the Olympics. This time, I think we're gonna show it again, and this is the right room because a big part of our pitch, this isn't just an LA Olympics, it's a California Olympics. And between technology and new media and Hollywood, we'll reconnect people with an Olympic movement that frankly, is kind of sometimes losing its audience and people are wondering what's the core of it. I'm such a believer in that Olympic movement. Um, I'm doing this not just for LA, but for the Olympics. We've bid for the Olympics more than any city in the world and I hope they'll make the right decision in September and pick us again. Well, thank you. We've got so many things to talk about, particularly transportation. That will have to wait till next time. So thank you for being with us today, investing in scale. Thank you for all the ways your office collaborates with USC. And thank you mostly for your service to the city of Los thank Angeles. You. And let me Mayor thank uh, Michelle Grakian, who is your connection to our tech team. Michelle, c come out of your way. Yeah, She's she right did. there. I thank her too. But, but thank you. Appreciate it, David. Mayor Eric Garcetti. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.